All right, today on Crazy Performance Repair, we are going to do another tech help series where we go over uh, how to on certain things. And in this particular one, we're going to go over how to diagnose cars using an oscilloscope. This thing is my best friend when it comes to finding out different things about cars as far as how things are working. I can see things with an oscilloscope that you cannot see any other way, not even a scanner. I mean, there's no way a scanner can do half the things I can do with this thing. Now, scanners are nice because they give you a location to look towards. So say it says uh, fuel pressure is erratic or something weird like that. That's when you break this guy up. You break this guy up and you find out why the fuel pressure is erratic, whether it be using an amp clamp on the fuel pumps or whatever. I'm going to go over some of the more basic things with an oscilloscope. There are all kinds of different versions of oscilloscopes. There's something like this. This is a, more of a mainstream in the re respect of electronics as far as building electrical circuits, things like that. It's not really used in the automotive world very much. Most people use something like a picoscope or the snap-on modus or the snap-on, uh, they have a little the Ferris, I think it's called. But there's all kinds of different versions of lab scopes. That's all I'm getting at. So do your research. Pick the one you prefer. There's lots of benefits and downsides to all of them. They all have their little niches. PicoScope is probably one of the best if you do this a lot. It gives you all kinds of breakdowns of how to test each thing. If you know what you're doing, you don't necessarily need that. Uh, and if you're on a budget, something like this works great. I have this because I'm on a budget. So first thing we're going to do, I have a Trans Am here today, and I want to check the engine's mechanical condition in the respect of compression. So we are going to do a compression test that tests all the cylinders in this engine at the same time. And it's a really simple test, and it doesn't require you taking spark plugs out or doing anything of that nature. And it works phenomenal for getting a good idea of whether the, the engine is equally mechanically sound. It does not tell you max compression, of course, and if you want to know which cylinder is low, you either have to do the physical test or you have to hook up to another thing, but I'll show you that in a minute too. All right, so you can see I got the lab scope here. What we have is we have a Fluke I-410. It is a amp clamp, a high current amp clamp, AC-DC, doesn't really matter. Now you can get all kinds of different brands of these as well, it doesn't have to be the Fluke. Uh, nothing has to be brand specific, but look for reviews, you know, do your research, find out what you like. I need to take this and I need to hook it up to the main battery cable. I can go to the positive or the negative, it doesn't matter. I can do either or, especially with this lab scope. I'm going to just go to the negative because it's the easy one. I'm on the negative. The car's key is out of the car, the doors have been shut, there's no modules alive. So I am not going to be reading any interference. That's why I went ahead and hooked it up. I want to zero it out before I do anything else. And I'm not going to go over all the little different settings with this. I'm just going to hit some of the main basic things because every lab scope is going to be a little bit different. So I have this thing set on the right area. So we have a couple different things here. We have volts, millivolts. So this is going to be the range and then the time. And you always want to get your range and time set before you do anything else. And I'm not going to go over into too many specifics with this because I don't want to go into the specifics of this particular meter. But every oscilloscope will have a range and a time. So the voltage here is up and down. I'm going to set it. So all I'm worried about right now is the amperage. I'm going to make sure that you can see this. Okay, so you can see where it's at. Now on the bottom here, we have 5 amps. So every one of these lines is going to be 5 amps. And this is the time. Every one of these lines is going to be 1 millisecond. That's definitely not what we want. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to play with this and this to get it where I want. Okay, so we want about a 50 amp scale. And probably about a 200 millisecond scale on that. Now you see that's the 2.9. So I'm going to go turn the dial and get that as close to zero as possible. On the Fluke amp clamps, there's a dial on here to zero that out. Okay, that's close enough. See, I'm on 0.2 amps. Now, obviously, 0.2 amps is not going to make any difference with a starter that's drawn 100 plus amps. So, we're just going to go ahead and run it here. On the starter, there is a couple of leads, and those leads that I have are to a switch. 
you can't see the switch in this video. I'm just going to push the switch. When it starts turning it over, you'll know I'm pushing the switch. And all I'm doing is directly jumping the starter to make just the starter work. So I'm not measuring current from any other part of the system, only the starter all by itself. And that is going to give us our base compression. Okay, so when I did that, I hit this replay button on this particular lab scope. It gives me a little like video clip of it that I can scroll through. See how I can do that? I can kind of go back and forth. So we're just going to go to this scale right here. Now, this is a actually really good compression to motor as far as being equal. You can see how it goes down a little bit, then it comes up, then it goes down, that little bit of a wave to it. And that could that could be many, many things. That could simply be the flex plate. Uh, it could be like some kind of weird oil pressure thing. Who knows what that is. That is not of concern when it comes to checking compression. What you want to look at is the top of these peaks and make sure that top to bottom is as equal across the board as possible and there will be a pattern here. So let's say, let's pick this lowest one, okay? The other lowest one is what, right there? So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it must have picked up a little compression later because there's seven in between. And that will continue if there was something uneven. So if there was one that had low compression, we're going to see that. And I'll go ahead and pull a plug to show you that. So this is interesting. I'm looking at this plug and I thought, why is that black line there? You know, that's a little bit different. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, that's old school. Old school AC Delco. And then I get over here. Notice the tip of the main electrode there. It's got little cut marks in it. Must be some kind of a previous version of a fancier plug back in the day, I suppose. But little little tidbit that was kind of neat I thought I'd share with you guys. Okay, the spark plug is out. We will turn this thing back on. I have not changed the scale, I have not changed anything other than got it out of the repeat mode. And there you have it. Now, we're going to explain what's going on here. Okay, so obviously this is the area that the spark plug is missing from. And I pulled cylinder to be number two, not that it really matters right now. But if you look here, this spike goes way down, right? because it's not drawing any current, comes up here. And this spike is always going to be just a little bit higher. The spike directly after is going to be a little bit higher than all the rest of them behind it. And the reason that is is because the crankshaft actually sped up when it didn't have all the current draw on it. So the starter was able to speed up the motor, and then it compresses it faster. And so it gets a higher spike when it gets to that max or that top of the compression stroke because it will draw an all of a sudden huge amount of current. So that goes up and the rest stay level. So if you see this one high, that's not any kind of alarm because this one's low. Now if you count this, so here's the bottom of the one. So there should be one right here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's your missing one. Okay, so eight cylinders. It's a V8, makes total sense. Now we're gonna take that one step closer and we're gonna leave that plug out and we're going to find out without knowing what cylinder that is. Um, I mean, we know it's number two because I said that. But we're going to go ahead and verify that that's number two. And I'm going to show you how to verify that's number two. This is a small block Chevy engine. So the firing order is 1843657.2. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the ignition now. We're going to put an ignition probe on channel number or channel B. We're going to put channel B on here. And we're going to also read that at the same time. And we're going to base it off of when well, cylinder number two, because that should be the compression stroke. It should line up just a little bit before the top of that compression spike. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can do this. You can use one of these guys here. This is a clamp specifically for going around spark plugs. And then it's got the end to fit my oscilloscope and then a ground. The ground is a safety thing in case the spark were to go through the wire and into the lab scope. That way it would it's got some kind of arc fault that arcs to this rather than through the lab scope. 
So this thing is a 1,000 to 1 ratio. I picked it up at AES Wave. It's a very good company if you're looking for this kind of stuff. Uh, they have all kinds of things. I have this cable from them as well. So I am not using this, however. I'm going even more simple than this because this does not function as good as I want it to. And all I'm looking for is a signal. I'm not looking for actual voltage. And because of that, I actually did what I have right here. You see this wire running around this? All I did was take a lead, wrapped it around, put one end on ground, and then the other end is hooked up to the lab scope. And the inductance that comes off this wire, this is actually my test wire, not the wire from the vehicle, but I'm using that to, since I have the spark plug out, to go into the spark plug wire of number two. So I'm actually hooked up to the current one that is the problem, or the, the one that's the simulated problem cylinder. So we are gonna go ahead and crank it over and that should line up with the cylinder that has the low compression. Okay, so there it is. You can see it fires just before the bottom of this missing hole. So the hole would line up just after that. So that's how you know that that is cylinder number two because I have the cylinder number two spark plug wire wrapped around with that uh, piece of wire and it does it again here. So there is your proof of correlation and how you can find it without even pulling a spark plug. Obviously I pulled a spark plug but that was for the reason of this test to show you how it works. Okay, you can probably hear that blower motor that's running right now. That's because I want to do one more test here and uh, show you what DC motors can be tested with and it's a low amp current probe. So basically we're just covering current probes today. I don't think I'm going to get into anything else. We are going to turn this guy on. This is a OTC 60 amp AC DC current probe. This is a relatively affordable unit. Uh, there's some more expensive ones out there. I don't know if it's necessary depending on what you're doing, but this does have a couple disadvantages, but it's cheaper. So what do you expect? So we're going to, we have it on, we're on one millivolt per 10 amps, or we can go to one millivolt per 100 milliamps. Did I say amps? They're, they're both milliamps, but anyway. One millivolt per 100 milliamps. We're gonna leave that off of there for now because that motor's running right now. Okay, I set the scope to the correct setting here for the one millivolt per 100 milliamps. It's a little bit different on the fluke how I have to set it, but you just do the math and figure it out. There's a little zero button on here, so I'm gonna go ahead, hit and hold that, and then let go. It zeroes out, it's zero, zero, 001 right now. Now I take this clamp and I'm gonna throw it on here. Okay, so I changed my scale. I got it set for the seconds I want. I gotta change the voltage yet. Okay, so you can see we got a decent reading there. And that's kind of a funky looking reading, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and turn this fan up. It is on Setting number two on the dial, it's two out of four. There's four settings on this car. The, you know, number one is the lowest, number four is the highest. So I'm gonna go put it on high, and that's gonna be full power to the fan. And I'll have to change my scale again. Okay, so you can see how this is kind of moving around. There's a couple things I wanna look at when I do this, and it's the way that the peaks are showing up, but I also wanna get a little bit farther away view, so it brings it like that. Okay, now you see how it's set up like that? It's going, whoa. Oh, that was my charger being on there. My charger just clicked off, so this is the natural. I'm gonna have to change that. I'm gonna have to get rid of the charger to do it right. But we'll pause this. Okay, so looking at this pattern here, you can kind of see what it's doing. It's, if you follow the, the, the middle of these spikes, okay? So you follow the middle, it's gonna go up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. That part is on the motor, is it's, it's wobbling back and forth. So say this is the, the part of the motor inside that's spinning. The bushings, if they're loose, it's going to be doing this, this number here, okay? And that's what that is. It's going like this, and it's pushing harder against... So the brushes, they come in like this, and it's pushing harder against the brushes back and forth and changing the current draw. That's that little up and down motion. Now... You can take these and find a pattern. 
So the pattern that you want to look for is similarities. And you want to find where there's a couple things happening that are, that are the same as it goes along. This one's a hard one. I, I, can't, I can't see the obvious pattern as easy as most of them. So most of them you can see like there'll be one that's just got a really crappy bump in it. It just doesn't work very well at all. And that's a bad uh, part of the armature. But this one's actually, the armature part is pretty decent. It's the bushings that are bad or, or a little worn out. Which isn't the end of the world, it'll survive. Uh, so if you have one that's got, say, a bump in it, a, a flat spot in it because of a bad armature contact, you'll have a, where you can count in between, you can actually figure out the RPM. This one would be a little difficult. I could guess it. But what we'll do is we'll just kind of go off of, we'll go ahead and, uh, here, these three and those three look the same. So we'll start it here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So yeah, we have six. That would be, that probably about right. Six there. So we can take that six number and then we can find out the time. The time is five milliseconds uh, per division. So we can go from right here to right here. So it's almost five milliseconds, probably 4.8 for six armature. And you can calculate that by figuring out time, etc., and use a calculator to find the actual RPM. Now, that's not very helpful on a blower motor, but when it comes to a fuel pump, sometimes that can help you a lot. Uh, there's certain things in certain scenarios that knowing parts of a, of a fuel pump and what speed they should be at is helpful because if the fuel pump is spinning way too slow then you're gonna have uh, an issue where you can find a, a plugged fuel filter and you'll know it's plugged because it'll slow down the pump um, and it'll increase the current uh, so we're drawing 13.4 amps 13.4 is a healthy number for a blower motor a fuel pump you want to see around 9 uh, I don't know if there's much else to tell you on that so we're going to we're gonna call it at that for now. I think that was enough information on this. If you like more lab scope videos, I will gladly bring more. Maybe I'll do some injector patterns, some uh, ignition patterns, because that pattern that we had was just a barely a spike. I mean, that's when it sparks. You can't see anything else because we were zoomed too far away. And I can do, I can do whatever, whatever you really want. Uh, comment below if you want to see more what you want to see. What do you want to see tested? Do you want to see ignition system test? Do you, I, can make, I could probably make an entire video just on ignition systems and knowledge on that. Uh, maybe fuel injectors, perhaps uh, mass airflow sensors, throttle position sensors, things like that. Uh, let me know, throw me a comment, and I'll be sure to try and get a video out on that particular subject. And uh, we'll just kind of play it by comment and figure out what I want to make the next video on. Uh, like, share, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, if you're already subscribed, thank you for your subscription. It's well appreciated. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on another video.